Hello, I'm Ida. And I'm Sam, and welcome to our 2021 Chagrin Valley Soap and Salve Virtual Open House. This is my kitchen, and 20 years ago in May, last May, I made my first batch of soap in here. And this is also where I began making lip balms. Actually, all my products started in this kitchen, so we thought we'd bring you back to where it all began. The really cool thing about lip balms is that they're so simple to make, but it's something that you can do in your kitchen and with your family. And so we thought, you know, what an easy thing for us to be able to show you how it was originally done, which is also how we still do it. And this way you can go through it in your own home with your family for our virtual open house. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is talk a little bit about the setup, the ingredients, and what you need. If you went onto our website and ordered one of our kits, you got a little small bag that came with three empty tins, a few stickers for labels, and a recipe and instruction card. The recipe and instructions that are on this card are also on the page that you're viewing this video on today, so everyone has access to those. If you didn't get the tins at home, please use any container you have that would be about one quarter to one half of an ounce, depending on how much lip balm. These are one quarter ounce containers. Altoid mini mints containers work really, <laughs> work really well. Good call. <laughs> and the, the really cool thing about these labels is um, they're kind of ones that you can design at home. And so if you're doing this at home you know, for yourself or with your family and obviously with kids, you can make really cute labels, design them on here, and then stick them on the top when you're done. And so Grandma will love them. We encourage you to uh, take anything you need from your home to get set up and then once you've got those items now we're gonna move over to talk a little bit about the ingredients what we've got here set up today for us is the three things we use in our actual coconut lip balm uh, organic virgin coconut oil organic beeswax and organic castor oil we sent you at home because they're easy to use uh, a little container with um, pellets in it the beeswax pellets but if you have actual real beeswax, um, you can use a grater, a microplaner, a xylus, and grate it so that you actually get raw beeswax to use and measure. And then those are pretty easy to rinse with hot water. Yeah, actually boiling water. You pour boiling water on them, it'll, they'll clean off right away. If you're going to do this a lot, have a dedicated grater for your beeswax. <laughs> yeah. I can so tell you that. The scale we're using is the typical scale we use at our workshop. Uh, it goes down to a gram. Uh, actually to a half gram, and it's really good for measuring this type of stuff. If you don't have that, also on the page and in the card, we gave you measurements with teaspoons or tablespoons because we know that's common for you to have it at your house. Uh, and then as far as the container, um, glass Pyrex does work. Uh, at the shop, we use these small metal pitchers. So if you have these, they're great to use, um, but we're gonna use a Pyrex today. So to get started, uh, the two things Ida did before we even got going. One is she put a metal spoon in the freezer. Mm -hmm. So take a metal spoon, put it in your freezer, and we'll tell you why soon. The other is that she already got her water started on the, on the stove. The, if you start your water, it'll take about five to seven minutes for your lip balm to be done. If you start it from cold, it'll take about 15, 20 minutes. That's the only difference in starting your water. And I, I think it's on, a, it's on a low heat. Yeah. Because if you get your heat too high, the water will start to boil pretty quick. Once it boils, it creates mist, and the mist will condense and go right into the product, and that's very bad. Remember, everything we have is oil and plant-based and is water-free because we use no preservatives and no chemicals, so keep it water-free. Okay. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is to take the virgin coconut oil and put it into the measuring cup that you're going to use in the water. We want to do the coconut oil first because if you're using beeswax pellets, if you drop too many in, it's hard to get them out once you have the coconut oil in there. So we're gonna measure out 37.3 grams. Scale is very sensitive. Of organic virgin coconut oil, which you can readily get at any of your like Whole Foods. Any, any health food like store that. you'll be able to get, yeah. Right. Or, or any grocer these days actually, lucky enough you can get organic coconut oil. The next thing is the beeswax, and as Sam said, we gave you pastels because they're really, really easy. Tear your scale. Please. Always tear the scale between <laughs> Thank you. ingredients. I forget yeah. that. So now we're going to put in 5.2 grams of beeswax or two teaspoons. Excellent. Now the next and last ingredient we're going to put in is castor oil. If you don't have castor oil at home, you can substitute other liquid plant oils. You can use something like sunflower, you can use olive oil, um, and today as we put this in, we'll actually give you a couple quick measurements for what some of the other oils will be. So we're going to put in right now 3.6 grams or one teaspoon 
of castor oil. 3.6, 3.6. Come Almost. Okay, that's it. Okay, and then this is gonna go right into our warmed water. And this is my favorite stirring tool. They're chopsticks. We have plenty of them and we still use them in our shop. This is literally what we use in our shop to stir things with. Believe it or not, 18 years later, we're using chopsticks. <laughs> so just so you know, look at the recipe carter online if you wanna substitute one of the plant oils that you're using instead of castor. And if you wanna make a vegan version of this, just know that you can always use candelilla wax or carnauba wax instead of the beeswax. Just know they have a higher melting temperature and they get harder quicker. So just make sure you do your research on proportions if you're gonna substitute what we did today. Um, I think while it's sitting on the stove now might be a good time to talk a little bit about why we're even here, why and, we're here. And, and you know who right. we are. So for those of you that don't know the full story, you know, the whole reason Ida even started in this kitchen is because she was originally a nurse and then became a biologist and then a science professor for so many years. But it was family eczema that really led her to want to develop a better product than she was finding out there on the market. And so for me to come in here as her son and just see her standing at the stove was pretty normal, except often now she wasn't making lunch or dinner. She was doing exactly what we're doing today, which is using these raw plant oils and these raw plant ingredients to create different types of infusions, healing products, and the things you see on our website. It started with a soap bar, but now there's over 400 products that we make. 400. 400. <laughs> and what's wild is that we've only improved our ingredients ever since. And so now everything we have is USDA certified organic. The beeswax we use, the organic uh, castor oil, and obviously the coconut. We highly encourage you to go out there and attempt to get those same level quality ingredients that we use. Go to a local store, go to a health store, go online, and make sure your, or, your ingredients are organic clean, not filled with pesticides and fertilizers, and then you get a beautifully clean lip balm when you're done. Right. The other thing to say, which is so phenomenal, is we're not doing this today just for fun and show. You know, last year for our virtual open house, we really we toured you through we the entire shop. The whole tour. Um, and we thought, what could be different this year? And what's fun is we're not mocking this up. You know, while we have come back to the original stove, this is exactly what we do and the way we do it every day. And so if you come to our real workshop to see the entire process, you would still see this. You're still gonna see a four burner stove. You're still gonna see that small metal pot that we showed you. Uh, they're still using a chopstick to stir. And we're using this scale. We brought all these things from our actual workshop. So understand that what's amazing about Chagrin Valley, not only the level of knowledge, not only the level of ingredients, but the process itself has not changed for almost 20 years. Right. We actually hand make these things in tiny batches the way Ida always has here on the stove. So I think that's what's great about what we can show you today. You can really replicate this at home with your family. You know, and I say this all the time, but the product is only as good as the ingredients used to make it. And Sam's right. They actually use a pitcher just like this in our kitchen. They just fill it up a little higher. <laughs> Well, so like any good cooking show, of course, we've sped up the process a little bit. Um, it can take anywhere from 15 or 20 minutes up to a half hour, depending how slow and low you go with the melting process. So we've already melted our three ingredients together. The coconut, the castor, and the beeswax are now melted right here into the pitcher. And again, we're going to take the same containers that we've sent you our 0.25 ounce tins, but of course at home, again, you can use anything that you think is gonna be super useful for you. First thing we need though, is our special trick mm, spoon. Yeah. Our trick spoon. So, do you wanna tell them why we've frozen a spoon? <laughs> Lip balms are very, very forgiving. It's really almost impossible to totally ruin them because if you have a method like the spoon method or this other parchment that I'll show you later, you just dip the spoon in, this frozen. The lip balm will harden on the front of the spoon here. If you just wait like literally a few seconds, you can scoop it up and you can see whether or not it's too hard, it's too soft, or it's just right. If the lip balm is a little bit too soft, you add some more beeswax. If it's a little bit too hard, you can add some more oil. The recipe mm. that we're giving you here is for a soft, creamy lip balm. These will not work in lip balm tubes because they're, very, they're soft and creamy. I'll try. What's really nice is the moment it's on that spoon, it's just like the final product you're going mm -hmm. to get. And so this way you can really see it is the taste, is the scent, is the texture what I want it to be, which is very important if you're gonna work with essential oils. The other way that you can test it if you want to is you can just take some of your lip balm, put a couple drops on some parchment paper, 
and then take this parchment paper and put it in the freezer and, or the refrigerator. And then you'll see like, I don't know if you can see it on here, but you'll get this little mound of lip balm. And again, you can do the same thing. You can squish it around and say, it's too hard, it's too soft, whatever. So I think we're ready to pour. Okay. I'm using the scale just so that I pour the right amounts into the tins. There is nothing, you don't have to be precise about this, but. Our rule of thumb, we like to fill them <laughs> up close to the top. Right. You know. Back on grams again. Doesn't want to move. Okay, whatever. And this will make, I think as Sam said before, this will make about three, one and a half ounce. Where's You're the, gonna want to fill these more. Oh, where's the one little one with the um with the little heart on it? We already use that one. Mm -hmm. oh. We're just sort of adding some to some lip balms. We're, gonna save we're one topping of these. them all off. Yeah, save one of those you can show. Um, when you're working with the, the oils and butters and the lip balms and things like that, if you let this cool too much, it's very, very difficult to clean. So if you do let it cool, put it back in the water, let it get soft again, and then you can just take a, um, a dry paper towel and then just wipe out the inside. Then it's really easy to wash it with soap and water and put it in the dishwasher. The other thing is, because these lip balms are so forgiving, um, you, if you get called out in the middle of making the lip balm and it starts to harden or you have to stop or something, or again, these can be remelted and remelted and remelted. And it gives you a chance, a really great opportunity to experiment. Yeah. Yep. Um, and once they've sat now on this counter, I would say, you know, it could take anywhere from 20 to up to 40 minutes, uh, even an hour. And that depends a lot on the temperature and the humidity of the room you're in. But once they've solidified, and you'll know, because you'll come over and it'll look hard instead of looking like a glistening liquid. And of course, the color will change to almost that white of the original coconut oil. And then what you'll have after that time is an absolutely creamy yeah. smell. It. Mm. That smells like virgin pure coconut. It is, not coconut flavor. This is like mm, real coconut flavor. And if it's really hot out, you could put them in the refrigerator. I find that if you just leave them out, usually they, they will solidify. And what, what's super nice about, I think what you learned today is, you, obviously you learned how to make this lip balm, but you've learned a lot about the process. And so what you can do from here is you can experiment a lot at your house. Um, you can take these types of containers, these types of processes, and you can get shea butter and cocoa butter. You can get sunflower and jojoba oil. You know, you can experiment with essential oils. Make sure you always read about the type of essential oil and the strength you should use. But you can get the types of ingredients you want, and you can create these types of products just like we do. Mom started doing exactly that, and now we have all of those 400-some organic items we send to you. So hopefully this has been fun. Did we talk about um, the vegan option when we went through? Mm -hmm. Okay, just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that there are vegan options, candelilla, carnauba, or even no wax at all. So, okay. Yeah, um, I hope you guys have had fun today. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed doing this. I hope you got a chance to do it. Please know that uh, for about 48 hours from this video, uh, these ingredients and all of this process that we put up on the website will still be listed. After that time, we are going to be taking down the recipe and ingredients, but the video will be up for you to watch from here on, so hopefully you'll take advantage of that. Um, please know that today is our virtual open house day, and so we have 10% off today only on the entire website. So please go, take advantage, buy your favorite items. We genuinely appreciate your support, um, but take advantage of that 10% off. We thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we really hope that next time we can invite you in personally to our workshop again. Be nice. Because um, we're running out of fun, creative places to yeah. show up to. But thank you so much for, for being our loyal supporters and our customers. It means a lot to us. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And don't forget, be creative, have fun, and enjoy. doesn't matter if you make mistakes. You'll have fun learning how to create all these great products. Thank you. Take care.